As a child, my favorite game in the entire world was Zelda Link's Awakening. And to this day, it still remains my top favorite Zelda game of all time. But as a kid, I never beat Zelda's Link Awakening because I was a child and stupid. Yet, I kept finding myself coming back to the game more and more and more, and it wasn't because of the boss fights, or the dungeons, or the puzzles. Instead, it was for a minigame built into the main game known as the Link's Awakening Trading Game. It was everything that my little goblin brain wanted when I looked at YouTube videos of I traded a penny to a Porsche, and I didn't beat that either, because once again I was a child, and I was kinda stupid. But now as an adult, with a fully formed brain and the ability to Google things. I finally made my childhood dream come true. I beat the Zelda Link's Awakening trading game, and this is the story of how I did it. The trading game starts off extremely simply. You go to the trendy game, you get a Yoshi doll, and a child tells you where to put it. Although while you're at the trendy game, I would suggest, you know, yanking this man around because what's the fun if you don't? When the child tells you where to go, you're gonna visit a house with a mom and a father. Keep an eye on the father, there's more to him in the future, she goes ahead and plucks the bow right off her child's head and gives it to you in response as a trade. I ended up taking that ribbon to a bow wow down below in the same village, which makes it seem like this game's gonna be a lot easier than it actually is. The bow wow ends up giving you food, which doesn't seem like a lot to you and me, but if you actually own a dog, a dog giving you their food is a big sign of trust, which meant I was off to the right foot. I took the dog food and found a gator that is, I would say the third strangest merchant on this island, and gave him that in order for him to give me his produce, which for some reason you can't just buy. He eats the can, metal and all, gives you a banana, and had me wondering where I take the banana. Well, the obvious conclusion I thought, was the monkey right outside who's very angry. That was a no-go. Instead, I found a separate monkey next to a castle who decided to build me a bridge in response for some bananas, which, although very convenient to what I needed, was never asked for, and the monkeys didn't stick around to see if I used it. In reality, it just seems like these monkeys were already planning to build this bridge. I don't know why, but I do know that if I didn't get something from this trading game, it would end pretty quickly, so I forged a stick. I say that it's left over from the monkeys, but in reality it could just be from a tree nearby. Now you must be thinking, how in the world do you continue on from a stick? A stick is such an easy thing that anyone can get. Well, not everyone. Our local resident, I would say troublemaker when he's not napping, couldn't find a stick if he was on a tree that he was standing next to. And in fact, he had to use mine. Of course, he also didn't really offer anything in the form of trade. So instead, I snatched up the honeycomb that he was banging on and made my way out of there while he screamed in pain. Now, before I went any further, I decided to take a nice stroll at the beach and it actually worked out really well for me because I got my very own Marin, which is important to the story as she's needed for one of the biggest items in this trade. Looking for something to do, I went over to the animal village and ran into a bear who is also a chef. There is a lot of Winnie the Pooh similes here for me, but I do think he would have made Eeyore a lot happier as a friend. He's just very supportive and a well-rounded chef. Luckily, he was out of honeycomb and needed one pronto. He gave me a pineapple instead, which I do think was slightly because he couldn't cut it well and it gets your hands all sticky. Either way, a pineapple is just what I needed. So you know how I said, remember that guy from the beginning? Well, he's back and unexplicably has climbed a mountain. When you start a conversation with him, he acts like he's already started a conversation with you which he may have in other people's games. In mine, I've never talked to this man, and in fact, he just comes across a little creepy, and slightly like James Franco from 127 Hours. His whole shtick is that he needs vittles to keep going, so give him the pineapple. He'll repay you by giving you a hibiscus and actually returning to his family instead of abandoning them. Luckily, I remembered a goat in Animal Village that really loved hibiscus, so I decided to take it to her and see if she would trade me anything in return. And luckily for me, she gave me a letter to deliver, which, wait, now I'm just working for her. I'm basically Hyrule Express. Upon delivering the letter, I learned that there might not be full truth to what she was saying, but I'm not one to judge, and instead of being the 88th person to make a joke about a goat catfishing this old man, I instead decided to take the moment and wonder, what game exactly are we playing? Mr. Wright ends up giving you a broom, and we all know where that broom was gonna go. One of my favorite characters from the entire game mainly because of her dialogue when Bow Wow gets kidnapped, needs a new broom. She gives you a hook she found while sweeping the riverbeds, because apparently she only sweeps the outside. And if you go under a bridge, you'll find a very struggling fisherman. The secret here is you give him the hook so he finally reels something in, and then once he reels it in, you steal it from him. I mean, he still has the hook to catch other things, right? But here's where Link becomes a true con man. Once he steals the mermaid necklace from the fisherman, go find the mermaid. I bet she would pay an arm and a leg 
and mermaid terms for it. And rightfully she did, as you take a scale from the mermaid. Although the whole scene was a little interesting for me. Now I remember earlier when I talked about very strange gator culture in the form of sails. Sails is considered the least weird out of all of the gators in the game. Granted, there is only two gators in this game. His brother is an artist. And although his canvas never really shows what he's looking at, he did craft a mermaid statue. A mermaid statue that successfully would fit that mermaid scale. For some reason, this mermaid statue is hiding a cave to a chest which has a magnifying glass in it. Apparently being able to read fine print is a privilege that he doesn't think everyone deserves. But with the magnifying glass equipped, you can now see things that weren't there before which is not how a magnifying glass works. One of those things that you can see that you've never seen before is this merchant down at the bottom of the beach, which is where the story takes its darkest turn. You remember how I said, make sure to hold on to Marin as you will need her for later? This is that moment. This merchant requires the final trade to be something that you hold the most dear in your life, which means you have to go full Thanos and give this merchant Marin. Oh wait, no, she's having a concert right now. I can't do that. Um, Just give him a shovel. He probably won't mind. And there you have it, the famous boomerang. Oh, and I guess you can also get the directions to just, like, end the game. But you've already beat the trading game, so I don't know why you would keep playing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mambo number five. Now, if you made it through this entire video, obviously no, I'm joking. This is actually one of my favorite games of all time, and I really enjoyed it as always. However, never expect a video like this from me again. See, I'm not like your normal YouTuber, I guess, in the sense that I don't make videos in, in hopes that it takes off and rockets and, and becomes everything else in the world. In fact, I make very selfish videos because I make videos for one person, myself. My whole goal as a video creator on this website is to have fun. And if I'm not having fun, I'm not going to do it. Which means a lot of my videos that I make are going to be considered really boring to other people. It's those older, long form let's plays typically. And then every now and then I might make a video like this. Usually I make it in a short style, but I decided this time to do a little bit longer to give justice to one of my favorite games. Either way, I do hope you really enjoyed it. And if you did want to leave a like or even subscribe to the channel to see if I ever drop a video like this again, feel free. Besides that, peace.